Our scripture this morning will come from Psalm 100, from the New King James Version. And it reads, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. Because we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Y'all know what? For the Lord is good. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. I read for you Psalm 100. May the Lord bless the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his holy word. Let's go, God. Father God in heaven, it's in the name of Jesus the Christ. It's in the name of that name, Jesus, that we come. We come in the name of your Son. We thank you, Father God, for him. God, we thank you, Father God, for who you are, for what you do. Lord, there is none like you. Regardless of where we look or where we go, we can find none like you. Lord, you are the awesome, amazing God. You are God all by yourself. Lord, you have blessed us again to cross over into a brand new year. Lord, no one could do it other than you because there is no one like you. Lord, you blessed us to arrive to another first Sunday in a brand new year, Lord. And Lord, we thank you, Father God. God, we thank you for blessing us, Father God, realizing that we didn't deserve it. Lord, we realize that we didn't pay for it. God, we realize, Father God, we are not fit to be here. But because of your grace and your mercy, you have given us one more chance. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. God, we thank you for blessing us just to come to the house of prayer. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity. For we know our sins have been many. But, Lord, you've forgiven us and blessed us. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for making us who we are, for blessing us to have a heart to come to church, for blessing us to have a heart to tune into your word. Lord, we thank you, Father God. We thank you for keeping in us in our right minds. We thank you for blessing us in sickness, seed, and unseen. Lord, you have blessed us again, and for that we say thank you. God, we glorify you today, for you are worthy of all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. Now, Lord, we ask you, Father, to forgive us for our sins. Bless our lives that we will turn to you. We will forsake our evil ways, and that we will be blessed of you. Now, Lord, we ask you to administrate this service. Bless us, Father God, to hear from Jesus. Bless us to recognize him. And bless us, Lord, to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Yes. We pray that you bless the priest's word, yes, that your word will fall on good soil, yes. that we will run, tell men, women, boys, and girls about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Yes. Lord, we thank you now. Yes. We thank you that you are healing us. We thank you that you are keeping us. Yes. We thank you that you are giving us the victory. We thank you that 2024 will be better than 2023. Yes. Lord, we ask you to deal with our hearts and turn our hearts toward you. Yes. And Lord, we thank you for Jesus. Yes. We thank you for the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit that rules, rests, and abides in us. Yes. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray, and we ask it all. Amen. Thank God. Jesus, 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 oh, yeah. Jesus, 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 Jesus,
can you imagine? We can only imagine. We can only imagine. One of these days, we will stand before Jesus. Will we be able to speak at all? Will we dance before Jesus? In all we will just be still. Hallelujah. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Brother Hoover. Thank you, Brother Melo. Thank you, Brother and Sister Melissa, for getting us to this point in our service. It is the responsibility of those of us who love the Lord. To welcome the Holy Spirit. And we welcome Him in this place. Not only do we welcome Him in this place, we can welcome Him in this in this place. We serve an awesome and the things to come. I just want to report to you this morning. In the Old Testament, the book is Proverbs, chapter 19, verses 20 and 21. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Proverbs, chapter 19, verses 20 and 21. When you found it, you will discover these words. Listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. I want to talk about the Lord's counsel. The Lord's counsel. During this new year, we all, regardless of where we are located, are listening to somebody's counsel. We are either looking at the 12 step solution to staying off of alcohol or the five steps to prosperity, right. or we are listening to how to live your best life now. Everybody who listen to somebody's counseling, if they're gonna do it this year, they're doing it right now. We have New Year's resolutions being thrown all over the place. People are hearing voices, and some of us are hearing God's voice. But many are hearing voices that does not represent God. The psalmist says that you're blessed when you don't listen to ungodly counsel. The psalmist declares that those who do not Listen to ungodly counsel in someone. He declares that we are blessed. We are happy. 
if we choose not to listen to ungodly counsel. He goes on to say in Psalm 1 that if you listen to it, you will find yourself standing with them. If you listen to it, you will find yourself walking with them. And then he shows a natural progression. If you walk with them, you listen to them, you will sit down with them. And you will take heed to what they're saying and how they're building their lives up in order for your life to be made the better. I always say, if you want to know if someone counseling is good, if someone counseling is godly, let it line up with the word of God. The other, the other test that you can tell if a personal counsel is good, if it's a godly counsel, is to look at their lives. If their lives is still messed up, then if the counseling that they give won't work for them, it sure won't work for you. The psalmist says, that we are blessed when we walk in godly counsel. Yes. We are blessed when we walk in the counsel of those who obey God. Yes. Children all over the world are seeking counseling in the wrong places. Their peers know better than they know. And children know better than parents know. All over the world, people are at a point in their lives where they are trying to make good, wholesome decisions that will put them in a better position tomorrow than they are in today. The rise right in Proverbs has an answer. I told you a story, and I'll tell the story again. Guy was in the bed sleeping. He was taking his rest. He gets a phone call from a friend of his. He said, man, get up out of that bed. Let's go rock bank together. John was sleeping. I don't know if his name was John, but we, we pick on John all the time. John was sleeping in his bed. John was relaxing for the day. And Jim called John and said, John, let's go and rob a bank. Guess what John did? John got up. John put his clothes on. He connected with Jim Nim. And Jim Nim went to right there in Pearland at Bank of America. You got Jim Nim plus John. They decided that they were going to rob a bank. On their way into the bank, this was before COVID, so they, so they had no reason to wear masks. On their way into the bank, there was a lady sitting in the parking lot who was, who, was, who was writing out her checks and signing her checks and filling out her deposit slip. She just happened to be sitting in the parking lot. Jim, John, and them show up. Right before they went in the bank, they donned their masks. I'm not talking about a face mask like you have on today. I am talking about a full ski mask. Right, right. Remember, John was asleep. John was at home. John was in John's bed. John wasn't bothering anybody. Jim called. John, John's with Jim. And they go to the bank, put on their mask before they go in the bank. And the woman that was sitting in the parking lot called 911 and said these words. There are four guys that just walked in the bank and they put they put masks on before they went in. All of a sudden, police cars are everywhere. Jim them in there. And John is in there. Lo and behold, Jim them go out the back door and they escape. But the moment they start letting the gate down, John, the one with sleep, was stuck inside by himself. 
Now John is, John is stuck inside. The ones who told him, let's go rob the bank because we can make a lot of money, they gone. John is stuck inside the bank. John had gotten counsel from Jim Nim. Jim Nim gone. John stuck in the bank. People laying on the floor, people giving up their wallets, and, and, and John all of a sudden saw the gate. <laughs> gate went down. Blue, white, and red lights outside. Sirens going off. John looks for Jim and them, and they gone. Now John is in there. He's scared because he was sleeping. John just got matters out of his eyes. John just wiped his face. John was minding his own business. And now he's stuck in a bank. People lying on the floor. Jim them gone. And John is stuck like Chuck. They just simply opened the door when the laws got there. And while the laws was trying to get in on the outside, John inside, and one particular victim who was there called her pastor. All right. So John won't know who you talking to. She said, well, I'm talking to my pastor. All of a sudden, John had a New Year's resolution. He said, let me speak to him. Because I'm messed up now. I need to talk to the man of God. Let me tell you, he should have called a man of God before he got out of the bed. Or he should have called on God before he got out of the bed. Now John wants to talk to the man of God. Let me tell you, when you get in the fix, you need to talk to God. So he says, he said, he said, Reverend, what do you think I need to do, Reverend? The preacher said you need to let all those folk go. Now, the preacher could have gotten super spiritual and said, well, let's pray together, brother. No, John is stuck in there with a gun, and the simple solution that the preacher had was you need to let all those folk go, and after he began to let them pile and file out of there, then he wants the preacher to pray for him. John, getting time. John arrested that day. Now, I'm, I'm not an advocate of people sleeping late. But that day, Brother Hopper John should have stayed in the bed until Jesus got here. John is facing time. John is caught right away. And of course, John going to sell out Jim Neal. I'm telling you, the problem is people take bad advice every single day, take bad counseling, counseling that doesn't even make sense. Mr. Brown, if he had called you and you're trying to get your rest from a midnight shift, said, Mr. Brown, let's go and rob a bank. Mr. Brown darned her peace. Darned her, her face mask. And she goes and get with Susie and them. And they decided to rob the bank. All of a sudden, she should have stayed in the bed. The Bible, the text says, in Proverbs 19, it talks much about having integrity. The text talks much about making sure your lips are not perfect. The wise writer says much about not being foolish and twisting stuff. He even talks about a false witness will be punished and will not go unpunished. He gets down to verse number 20, and he says, listen to counsel. Listen to the advice of other people. But you have to choose who you listen to. Young men, young girls, make sure you don't listen to Jim Nim. Make sure that the people in your age group are not your 
your best counselors. Because they're struggling with their stuff themselves. Young people, let me just tell you, when puberty sits in, your brain goes crazy. When puberty sits in, back home they said, boy, you just manage and you smelling yourself. <laughs> it's when puberty sits in. When puberty sits in, puberty, foolish advice from puberty will tell you to talk back to your mom. Foolish advice from puberty will tell you to tell your daddy to shut up. When puberty sets in, young girl, you find yourself listening to a joker that just crawled out from under a rock. But it says, listen to counsel. Listen to wisdom. There are three ways I've come to the conclusion that there are three ways. I'm sure there are many more. There are three ways that I can get godly counsel. There are three ways that I can get wisdom. Number one, the Bible says that the book of Proverbs offer wisdom. We ought to read it every day. We ought to make sure that we understand what Proverbs says because Proverbs would have told John, don't you do that. Proverbs would have told John, don't connect yourself with the wrong people and do the wrong thing. First of all, if you want wisdom, Proverbs has wisdom for you. 31 chapters in Proverbs, you can read a chapter a day, and when you get to a month that doesn't have 31 days, double up on the last two days, and then when the next month comes in, read Proverbs over and over again, because even grown folk need wisdom. When I see people 20, 30, 40 years old that's, that's dropping it and shaking it and exposing all their stuff, let me tell you, that's not wisdom. Because sooner or later, you're going to get saved. And you're going to want that past to be wiped away. But somebody's going to hold you accountable to where you've been, to what you've been doing, how you've been hanging out. The text, the text says, listen to counsel and receive instruction. It's a sad day when you get to a point in your life where no one can tell you anything. That's a grown folk like that. They call it set in their ways, but I say they just want to do what they want to do the way they want to do it. I run across some folk like that in the church. Save folk. Love the Lord folk but they want to do it their way every time as if they are attending a Burger King commercial. As if they listen to Frank Sinatra on a regular basis. I did it my way. But what did your way get you? The Bible says, listen to counsel. He there says, listen to wise counsel and follow instruction. Take heed and receive instruction. I hope there's no one in this room who, who no one can tell anything. I hope there's no one in the room. I don't even want to look at you. Don't raise your hand. Don't, don't chew your lips or anything. I hope there's no one in this room who have come to the conclusion, I know it all. The text says, listen. The text says, receive good wisdom. That you may be wise in your latter day. It's something about a young fool. I mean, you can halfway forgive somebody that's young and in front of a fool people. But Brother Carter, old fool, is something wrong with that. Somebody that has seen many days. Somebody have, that have seen things happen over and over again. You have criminals that go and rob banks. You have criminals that go and, and rob houses. You have criminals that burglarize people. You have criminals that rape people. And they come to the conclusion, really, Brother Miles, I'm not going to get caught. But they have seen for years and years that if you run, you can't hide. You cannot beat a radio transmission. You cannot run it. They don't have to run behind you. They have high tech stuff. They got drones in the air that's just following you. They have satellites that hear our every conversation. And you come to the conclusion, I'm going to get away from it. Listen to wisdom. 
instruction that you will become wise. All of us in this room have some kind of knowledge of something. Some of us have many degrees and, and some of us have, have matriculated through school and, and we are just so great at what we do. But when you become educated, make sure that you still listen because there is wisdom in listening. Because there are many, and I've seen many of them, some of them got PhDs, but they are educated fools. The Bible says he who does not follow God, he who does not honor God, he who does not know God, he is a fool. It says, if you listen to godly counsel, if you listen, you will have wisdom. You will be wise in your latter days. Let me tell you, the mistakes I made early in my life, I can't afford those mistakes now. Decisions I made with my money years ago, I can't, I can't afford a trickle of that decision to take place now. Any financial advisor will tell you, when you're young, you go for it. When you're young, you, you become aggressive. But when you get to be old, it's time for you to become moderate or for you to slow it completely down and take no risk. When, when you're young, you can go bankrupt a couple of times and you can recover. But when you're old, you can't do that. You have to make godly decisions. And it's a terrible thing when grown folk make ungodly decisions over and over and over again. I'm going to tell my boss a piece of my mind. Ungodly decisions. Not many bosses are going to listen to you, talk about them, and talk to them crazy, and then pay you on the weekend. If you think you're living for the weekend, you'll be living broke for the weekend. Let me tell you, sometimes you got to know when to hold them. Sometimes you got to know when to fold them. Sometimes you know when to speak. And sometimes you need to know when to shut up. If I'm ever harassed by a police officer, you, you can better assure it's not because I'm out law. I got it down to a size. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. No, ma'am. You, I clock you speeding. Yes, sir, it's your right. Give it to me. Let me go. Don't try to perform courtroom duties on the side of the road. Wisdom. Verse number 21 says, there are many plans in a man's heart. We ought to make plans. We ought to have New Year's resolutions in this room. Everybody ought to have something that they're looking forward to do, and everybody ought to have a goal in mind. If you have a friend who does not have a goal, who does not have a plan, leave that friend alone. One woman, one woman asked, man, he, he, he rolled up on it. You know how brothers roll up on you? He, he rolled up on it, and he was like, He's like, hey, girl, can I take you out? Can I spend some time with you? And she asked him right off the bat, what is your one-year, three-year, and five-year plan? And he looked at her like y'all looking at me. He's like, what do you mean a, a one-year, five-year, three-year plan? I ain't thought about it that far ahead of time. Well, honey, he's not for you because if he doesn't have a plan, he can't give you a plan. We ought to have plans. We ought to have goals. This year, we ought to make New Year's resolutions that we will and we can stick to. We ought to make plans. We must make plans. In order to be successful, we must think through our future. You ought to make a plan. Write it down. Habakkuk says, make a plan. Write it down. Make it clear. Habakkuk says, write the vision. Make the vision plain. Make it clear. God will bring it to pass if you write it down, make it plain, and make it clear. If you cannot say it in three sentences,
sentences, it's not a good goal. It's not a good plan. So what's your plan? Well, another guy says, my plan is to graduate. My plan is to major in this discipline. My plan is to get a job. And the one I prefer is at this company. He has a plan. My plan is to achieve maximum success in the job I have. He has a plan. Young girl, you ought to have a plan. Young man, you ought to have a plan. You ought to think your future through. You ought to make sure you participate in it. You know, church folk like, like prayer. It's amazing to me how church folk like to pray, but they don't want to pray. It's amazing to me that we can use prayer as an excuse. We can use prayer as an excuse for performance. We want to pray, but we don't want to perform. We want to pray, but we don't want to participate. What's your goal? Eat well. You got a heavy schedule. You want to get some off your schedule. You want to have a better social life. You are chasing your dreams, and everybody ought to chase their dreams. Don't let anybody tell you what you cannot be or what you must be. Don't let anybody tell you. Don't let anybody tell you what you cannot accomplish. You have to think through your future because circumstances will hit you blindsided. You have to think through your future because rainy days are coming. You have to think through your future because unexpected circumstances will hit you and disappointment will be all about you. You got to think through this thing. Matter of fact, you ought to think through conversation that you're going to have with other people. Well, if she says this, then I'm going to say that. If they say this, then I have to answer for this. You got to think through your plan, think through your life. Is your life exercising? I tell you that, that gym's going to be full in January. I mean, gym's going to be full. They have this special, I think it's Planet Fitness, you pay 25 cents to get in and $10 a month. People say, man, I, I throw away $10 a week. I'm going to do this. They make it so easy until you can walk in there whenever you want. They got 24-hour fitnesses. I mean, you can walk in when you want, walk out when you want, and in January through March, folk are piling in there. By the time March 31st gets, hits, they are piling out of there. <laughs> the plan is not on the, the forefront of their mind anymore. My next point to you is, once you make a plan, stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. Go after your plan. Write it down. Draw it out. Set your schedule. Look forward to reaching, reaching your goal. And on that plan, it ought to be church attendance. On that plan, it ought to be Bible study. On that plan, it, it ought to be Bible reading, Bible study, and Bible listening. You have to sit down in the stillness of the night or the stillness of the day by yourself and get along with the Lord. Because, because the verse says that there are many plans. This word plan are devices. There are many devices in a man's heart. There are many things we plan to do. Some people plan to be here this morning. Some people plan to be here Wednesday. And we ought to make a plan. It, trip, it blows my mind. It trips me out. When I say, hey, can we depend on you being at church on Sunday? And they get holy with us. If it's the Lord's will. Well, let me just serve you notice. It is the Lord's will. <laughs> they get so spiritual, all of a sudden, uh, it is, if it's the Lord's will, I'll be there. Or you get this answer. Can we depend on you being there on Sunday? They say, well, you know, I don't know what I'm doing on Sunday. I gotta check my schedule. But when 
you have a plan, when you have a priority, that plan becomes your priority. And when you have a priority, you don't let anything or anybody cross your priority. Don't let anybody shut it down. Don't let anybody shut it off. Everybody in the room knows what I'm going to be. Sunday morning. If I had enemies that was looking to take me out, you already know what I'm going to be. From 745 to about 1230, you already know where I'm going to be. I can't even hide from my enemies on Sunday morning. You already know where I'm going to be on Wednesday night. You already know from 5.30 to about 9.30, you know where I'm going to be on Wednesday night. Why can't other people set up a plan? Why do we have to wait until the doctor gives us a bad report to make a plan? If I had one sense for every lie that I've been told about church attenders, I would be filthy rich. I said one cent. I mean lies that I don't even ask for. Lies that I don't even engage. And every time there's a funeral, oh, Pastor, we going to be there tomorrow. <laughs> it's something about funerals that, that, that make folk want to go to church. It's, it's something about funerals when, when they hear the preacher say ashes to ashes and dust to dust and earth to earth. It's something about funerals that don't want them to go to church, don't make them want to go to church, but it make them lie about going to church. And I don't make it any better. I said, you going to be here any moment? What time are you going to get here? Well, you do know we start church service at, at, at 9, 9, 9 a.m. For, for, for Sunday school. You do know that, right? Now, we have a whole engaged dissertation right there in the cemetery. Right over the body of the loved one. Because you engaged me. And once you engage me, I'm going to give you perfect attention. I am going to give you my undivided attention because I have some questions. Now, you want to talk to me? If you don't want my fruit, don't shake my tree. If you don't want my fruit, let me go and walk on and get in my car and drive off. But guilt sets in. And they just think that they just need to give me a plan. Okay, give me a plan. I have, and this year, Pastor, we're going to do better. We're going we to give our tithes and offerings. Now, let me tell you all something. Let me just share with you. The worst thing you can ever say to me, one of the worst, one of the worst, is that when I hit it big and my ship comes in, Pastor, I'm going to pay that church off. <laughs> Sister Parson, I'm not asking you to pay the church off. I'm asking you to give 10% until your ship comes. Matter of fact, some people ship had to come in because God can't trust them with the 10%. And so why would God trust you with millions? If you are faithful over a few things, God will trust you with big things. The Bible says if you just be faithful over a few, God will trust you with a whole heap of plenty. Oh, Pastor, when my ship coming out. And I, I engage, they engage me, so I engage them. When your ship gonna get here? In other words, what are you gonna do before the ship shows up? And then I ask the question: Is it gonna be a ship or a Wells Fargo vehicle? So don't make me promises. Don't make God promises. Just do well with what you have, so God can bless you with what you need. The problem with people today is they pay for what they want and they beg for what they need. They, they, beg, they, they beg for what they need because they spend all their money on what they want. Credit card debt, got to get rid of it. There used to be a song out, Don't Keep Up With The Joneses. Did I have it right, y'all? Come on, sister, have you name of Stop running with the Joneses. Don't, don't keep up with the Joneses. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? I figured you would, you would know. Don't keep up with the Joneses. Stop keeping up with the Joneses. In other words, don't do what other folk do just because they like what they have and they can afford what they have and you can't afford what they have. 
in college, in college there, were, there were some girls that would pull up and, and they, were, they were driving their daddy's car, first of all. But they would pull up with Mercedes and, and BMWs and all these fancy cars. They would pull up in it and I would run the other way. One day, brother asked me, man, he said, why are you always talking to her and you won't talk to her? Look like she got money. I said, no, look like she got a lot of debt. <laughs> See, you never know what people have, never what, know what they own, never know what they're going through. They can make it look good. Now that we have social media, everybody's balling and shot calling. <laughs> I mean, they go to high rise and, and they take pictures and they, 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 they got makeup and they, they have the right clothes on and and they take those clothes back Monday morning. He said, man, man, she's riding in a BMW. She's riding in a Mercedes Benz. And you going over there talking to that girl walking, that's walking uh, uh, on the campus or, or she's riding a Chevrolet. I said, well, at least I know I can handle that debt. I can't handle that debt.
be 18 next year. He said, well, I'm just using my sanctified imagination. He would have said, yeah, well, why don't you leave now and then you can grow up 18 on your own. <laughs> God is a sovereign God. That's the last part of that verse. It says, nevertheless, the Lord's counseling, the Lord counsel, the Lord's advice, the Lord's instruction, that will stay. First of all, God looks out for us. He looks out for us better than we can look out for ourselves. God looks out for us when we're climbing up fool's hill. God, as a good parent, and the Apostle Paul compares God to a good parent, and as a good parent, because he knows what's best for us, he has some answers for us, and sometimes it's yes and no. Dad said, you ain't going nowhere. He didn't say, you know, son, let me sit down and talk to you about it. He said, no. He didn't say, maybe when you get there next year, I'll consider it. He said, no. I'm glad I signed up in the 11th grade, because if I had to sign up in the 12th grade, then I had to deal with the Army and Daddy, or, or the Air Force and Daddy. So I called that recruiter the next day and said, Daddy said, no. Because Daddy knows best. Daddy knows what I'm going to go through. And then I understood what we understand is they paint a glorious picture. Oh, you're going to be able to travel the world. You're going to be able to make your electronics, and we're going to make you the high tech. Now, he, I'm not even on base yet. We're going to make you the high tech guy. You're going to be the guy. Your smarts can get you there. But that said, no. God knows best. And whatever God tells us, let's deal with that. Let's keep talking to God about it. One thing about God, he's merciful. He's gracious. Daddy wasn't merciful. Daddy wasn't gracious. Daddy said, no, God wants you. Bible says that God says to us, come now, let us reason together. Let us talk about this thing. Tell me what's good and what you need. I always advise young people, if you're trying to make a good decision, you sit down and you write down your pros and cons. Pros meaning what's good for you. Pros, cons means what's bad for you. Right, make a list. Pros on this side, cons on this side. If I do this, then this is what the benefits are. If I do this, then this is the disadvantages. If I don't do this, then this is what the benefits are. If I don't do this, this is what the advantages and disadvantages are. You have to reason through it. You need to make sure you think through your future. Think through your future. Think through your future. Because the Bible says, regardless of what you plan, God has the last word. And sometimes we can push through it. We can push past him. That's why when we pray, we ought to say, if it's God's will... We're just not supposed to use it as an excuse. God, if it's your will, bless our church to grow beyond these chairs. God, if it's your will, God, I pray that you bless our young people to be experts at anything they want to be. God, if it's your will, God, make sure that you keep our family safe. The thing that came to me, we may not ever be in that church. But God knows what's best for us. We may not ever burst out the scene, but I ought to talk to God and ask God for it. We may not ever have thousands upon thousands of people, but God knows what's best. You may not have a thousand upon thousand pastor. The other, the other problem I have sometimes is that people say, I don't come over there because I don't, I don't like big churches. Now what you just said to me is, you're going to come over here as long as we're small, but if we get big, you're going to get gone. <laughs> Am I reading into it? I'm, I, I'm just saying, whatever God's counsel is, I'm with God. God's counsel will stand. What God says will last. God will not hurt us. God will not do us wrong. We may not understand, but what God says will always stand because 
he is sovereign, we must pray. And in our prayers, we must thank God for being a merciful God. Thank God for being our merciful God. Ask God to teach us to believe in him. God, teach us. Teach us. I want to get to know you, God. I, 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 don't want, I don't want anything today, Lord. I just want to get to know you. I want to spend time with you. I want to fellowship with you. Lord, teach us how to believe in you. In our prayer, we ought to say, God, teach us how to trust in you. The Hebrew writer says, he who believes must believe that God is and that God is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Teach us, Lord, how to trust in you. Teach us, Lord, how to rest in your perfect will and in your everlasting love. Lord, teach me how to rest. Teach me how to rest in you, Lord. Lord, teach me how to, how to be about your business. I com I'm convinced that if I handle God's business, God will handle my business. If I handle God's business, God will handle my business. You got an issue, put it in God's hand. He is the one who can handle it. We may not handle it when we want it, may not handle it how we want it, may not do it our way. But God knows what's best, and God can handle it. I'm talking about the Lord's counseling is what the counseling ought to be, and that's what we ought to end up. When we come to this new year, we need to look back and thank God. Look back and thank God. We're still here. That's enough to thank the Lord. We need to look back and thank God, and then we need to look forward and trust God. We have to look forward and trust what God is doing with us. And God is doing something with John that he can't do with Jim now. Their situation is not your situation. You have to look forward and trust God. We must fully commit to the Lord. We must fully commit to the Lord. We must fully commit to God and God's principles. We must fully commit and obey God's commands. We must fully commit to the Lord. We must fully commit to obedience to God's commands. One of the worst statements I heard last night in the, in the post-game show, a guy had, had taken him some spirits. And they were, they were in the spirit place. He had drank him some spirit. And you can tell in his eyes he had drank him some spirits. They put the mic to his face and he said these words. And I quote, that guy C.J. Stroud is our Lord and our Savior, end quote. He said that guy, quote, C.J. Stroud is our Lord and our Savior. End quote. But just two weeks ago, <laughs> just two weeks ago, number 18 was riding high. Just two weeks, a weeks ago, Case Keenum was his Lord and Savior. We only have one Lord and Savior. The choir identified him today as Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He is our Lord and our Savior. It only takes one push and Stroud was out of there. It only took one snap and Stroud had to take time off. We didn't come to Jesus. They thought they had him. They thought they had him down. They hung him. They killed him. They murdered him. They thought they had him. The devil rejoiced. The grave was celebrating. They thought they had him. He died on Calvary. 
calling us. He's calling us. Zion is calling us. Yes. The door is open. you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank God. We believe if you honestly prayed this prayer, trust in Jesus as your Savior. We believe that you are born again. You are saved. You are on your way to heaven. We have some who have come. We'll ask those some to stand. We'll ask them to stand. Well, we thank God for those who have come.
welcome to the rest to our church. Well, we thank God for one.
and prayer offline in person, okay? Next, our Bible, listen, and journaling. Certificates of completion for each quarter in 2023 will be given on next week, January the, the uh, Sunday, January the 14th. If you have not submitted your names to me, please do so as soon as possible. So to next week, we're going to see whose names will be called. This year, we are doing our Bible listening for 2024. We have already started our Bible listening for the year 2024. So please pick up your schedule from the First Impression Ministry if you don't have one. We are listening to the New Testament in 2024 along with studying in our weekly Sunday school lessons, music classes, calling all youth ages six and up. If you are interested in your child or know of a child who wants to learn to read and play music instruments, please contact me. Sister Carol and Davis. Classes are offered on Friday nights from 5 to 8 p.m. and also on Sunday mornings at 8 o'clock a.m. With that being said, we are going to go on a domestic mission trip. The Turning Hearts Music Ensemble and the NBC Youth are planning a domestic mission trip traveling from Texas to Mississippi and Tennessee on June the 5th through the 10th, 2024. The trip is open to anyone who wishes to travel with us. So please see Pastor Davis for more information to sign up if you're interested in going. We are requesting your financial support for this life-changing domestic mission trip for the youth. So please support the youth as they will engage in fundraising activities to help raise money for the trip. The youth will be asking for donations, so please, they have a calendar they, they have to fill up. So would you please support our youth? Another thing that we're doing, we're going to be having a lot of fundraisers. The first fundraiser we're going to have is at CC's Pizza. We're having a fundraising uh, a night. Turning Hearts and the, the NBC youth will perform at the CC's Pizza Gut Gate in an effort to raise money for our domestic trip. We are asking you to take a flyer and purchase pizza on Friday, January the 26th from 4 o'clock to 9 p.m. They're going to donate 15% of the sales to our youth, but you must present the flyer to the cashier at the time of purchase, and I will have flyers on next week. Okay? Our prayer request. Mark 11 and 24 says, Therefore I say to you, Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. So we are asking and requesting prayer for Shirley Bentley, Leah Williams, Lance Eldridge and family, Nathan Garrett, Chad Warner, Brandon and Braylon Davis, Patrice Caskey, Sibiran family, Patrick Brown, Pacheco family, Levy family, Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, Servine and Garcia family, Ford Pond, Fatima Radios, Beverly Wallace, Araya Carey Spencer, Malara Williams, Vivian Oslaha, Ed Brandon and family, Doris Bridgeforth, Jacqueline Torres, Dorothy Sellers, Raymond Alfred Jr., Al Brinson, Terrence Miller, Laborers for the Harvest, and World Peace. One additional announcement, would you please pick up your 2024 calendars from Pastor Davis on today. Now, Pastor Davis is going to come with our slogan winners, and thank you all so much for turning in your slogans. Amen. We had a competition for our slogan for 2024. And I met with two people. Did I meet with you all? I met with two people prior to this service, and I told them they better not tell anybody. Amen. So this is the deal. I gave them, first of all, bad news. First of all, there's no one person who won first place. First place will receive. 
team twenty five dollars. So there was no one person that won first prize. For example, that was the bad news. The good news was the two of them made the finals. The two of them made the finals. The great news was that we took both of their slogans and put them together to make one slogan. Okay, let's see what the slogan says. Stay blessed to the core because greater is in store in 2024. Stay blessed to the core because greater is in store in 2024. The person who gave the first part, stay blessed to the core, will you come? person who gave the second part, greater is in store in 2024. Will you come? What? Amen. All right, you stand here, you stand here. No, nah, he's just standing there. as if they have copyrighted material. <laughs> so in order for me to accomplish this, I need change for a 10, so I can give them $25 each. I need change for a $10 bill. Change for a 10. <laughs> hey, gonna make her own money, so she, she didn't want it.
ask you to bless us now. We come confessing our sins. We come, Father God, realizing that we've fallen short. We ask you to forgive us. Bless our lives. Keep us focused as we partake of the bread and the drink. We come to represent you. We come to remember what you have done. Bless us today. Bless the table. Bless the communion process. Bless these people. And Lord, that you will receive 